also a lot nicer. Shalom Chaverim. My thank you for reading the letter from the Prime Minister of Israel, which you got 20 minutes ago. So I'm living this a little, but it's an honor that uh, that he did that. I'm very touched. Who's next? John. John, thank you for introducing my video clips, in spite of the fact that there are no FX shows on there. <laughs> but maybe it was done for a reason. Because no one here knew you had a sense of humor. <laughs> and not only do you have a sense of humor, but you're really funny. So when you think of John Landreff in the future, don't think of this super dour, serious guy who's talking about the doom of the television business and blah, 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 blah. Think of this upbeat, wonderful, hilarious gentleman. I am so grateful for your friendship. And I love you and Allie so much. And it meant so much to me to have you up here. Karen, well, Thank you for introducing the letter from the President Perez. It's not often that someone has a special relationship with such an esteemed gentleman like that. I know the world will miss him. I know I miss him. But I'm so happy that I had my time with him on many different occasions. You're right. There's no one in the room who knows me as better as Karen. She knows me better than I know myself, that's for sure. And there's no one here who loves me as much as she loves me. On most days, there are those days that we all have in a marriage, and after 30 years, there may be a lot of them. There's a lot more, but she loves me. Thank you so much. <laughs> David, I'm so excited to be honoring this, this, be honored at the same event with you. It's really so apropos, considering our mutual interests regarding Israel. We are both kindred spirits in our efforts to introduce the Hollywood community to Israel. Through all the trips we organize, allowing people to get an up-close, real, and high-level exposure to the country from so many diverse perspectives. Max, I feel really humbled to be sharing this event with you. A man who has accomplished so much has faced so much adversity as you have had in your lifetime. You are the true hero here and a role model to all of us. Happy birthday. May we all be blessed to live a hundred years and still be as vital as you are today. is in 12 work camps and six concentration camps if you didn't read his bio. So I look good. Look at him. Just so touched to be here with you. I want to thank the Israeli Film Festival for this award. I'm honored to be recognized for my career achievement. I hope it's like my half of my career. <laughs> my endeavors for the Israeli television business. Thank you. To all my wonderful colleagues at Creative Artists Agency, who are everywhere here, and who are supporting me today. And in 20 years at CAA, this is definitely my best staff meeting, for sure. Thank you to all the clients, business associates, friends and family for also being here. I'm beyond touched and moved by the fabulous turnout of people who I truly care about. I'm often asked when my great love for Israel began. I never really had a proper answer to that question until two years ago when I was preparing for my son Brian's bar mitzvah. I actually found my original bar mitzvah speech when I was 13. Wow. And in those days, there were only three networks and PBS. <laughs> Let's hope that we'll still continue to be PBS. <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised to see that the main topic of my speech was why Israel is so important to the Jewish people and why we can never ever take for granted 
that, that country. As Jews, we do whatever we can in our power to keep the country a strong and vital democracy. It's so important. So apparently, I always had this fascination with this country I had never been to. As Karen mentioned, when I was in Greece, during my backpacking trip after college, I realized this was the perfect time to go to Israel and spend some time there. Thankfully, I gave up my job on Wall Street. Great decision. And I was placed in a kibbutz where I worked in a dog food factory. <laughs> factory for baby food and cleaning the fish ponds, which was disgusting. <laughs> Seriously, I wish I had pictures to prove it, but I don't. While there, I realized that you cannot really understand Israel without understanding the people. And almost all of the people have mandatory army service for several years. There happened to be a program for Jews from around the world that were interested in potentially moving to Israel to learn what the army was really about. It was three months of intensive basic training. We had real army uniforms. I wish I could still look like that. <laughs> and, we carried, and we carried M16s. I decided to apply and excitedly wrote my mom to tell her. As a true Jewish mother, she totally freaked out and wasn't excited at all. <laughs> <laughs> she decided that she was going to fly to Israel, even though she had no money, to rescue her baby son and bring him back to Long Island and never let him go to Israel again. Good you, Mom. Give me a rest in peace. However, before you could be accepted into this program, you needed to meet with the top general of the Israeli youth services because he had to make sure you were mentally competent. No jokes. <laughs> Because you're carrying a lethal weapon, you're walking all around the country. The interview happened to me when my mother was in Israel, so I brought her along. I thought to ease her mind. I was very wrong. <laughs> Conversation with the Israeli general went something like this. My mother asked the general why he thought it would be safe for me to walk around Israel with an M16, especially since I didn't really understand Hebrew, and the directions were to be given in Hebrew. She was actually right. Oh my God. I can say a couple of words in Hebrew. Like, uh, she says to the general, what happens if you tell him to put down the gun and he starts shooting? The general responded with all the seriousness a general could muster. Don't buddy, Mrs. Berkovich. We will take good care of your son. He will be fine. He was right. I had the most phenomenal experience, and when I left for home after a year, I vowed to return to Israel two years later to move there permanently and do whatever I could to help the country. Well, of course that never happened. I got a job at the William Morris Mailroom and soon became a secretary slash assistant. I enrolled in a Fordham Law School at night, and after four years of law school, I was definitely not prepared to give it all up to move to this tiny country in one of the worst neighborhoods in the world where I barely spoke the language. In 1985, while an assistant, I discovered the Israeli Film Festival. It was its first year in New York City, and I covered the festival for the agency and helped sign my first Israeli director. So as I stand up here today, 31 years later, 1986 actually, I can truly say I've come full circle with the festival. Okay, enough about the festival. No, <laughs> there are two Israeli shows that were in the clip reel that I'm really proud of being involved with that I'd like to reference today. The first one, The Greenhouse, was a huge team hit in Israel. It sold the format to Netflix. The American version was shot in Israel with the same Israeli production company that produced the Israeli version. The locale was supposed to be San Diego, so we can shoot shows in Israel that don't have to be taking place in Israel. It's good to know. This was the first Israeli show ever sold to Netflix. The production employed over 300 Israelis, and they shot 
25 episodes with 10 young American actors who got to see the country firsthand and to have a special experience of living there for several months. Why is this important? It's important because it's my hope that when they got back, they shared with all their other actor friends how wonderful the country is, despite what many read in the press on a daily basis. The second show is Fauda, where we sold the worldwide rights to Netflix. Thank you, Netflix. <laughs> Oh, is a true cultural phenomenon in Israel. It has broken ratings records, was nominated for 13 Israeli Academy Awards, and won six, including Best Drama Series. The critical reviews from the New York Times to Stephen King to lots of others that I put in print have been unbelievable. I love Fauda, and I'm so proud of my involvement in helping to make the show available to an audience outside of Israel. The authenticity of the show is, well, it's so authentic. Fowler depicts perfectly and objectively the insane conflict between the Israelis and the Palestinians. It doesn't pick winners and losers, because as human beings, we are all losers in this sad battle, where no one wins. Not only is it amazing television, but viewers outside of Israel and now see how incredibly complicated the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is. And there is right on both sides, and there is wrong on both sides, with no easy answers. In closing, I want to thank the Israeli Film Festival for this great honor. Additionally, I want to thank my terrific family for putting up with me day in and day out, because we know that's not so easy. And also for the love and support they show me. However, this is very important. I would not be in a position to accept this award today if it wasn't for the incredible organization I work for. I want to thank Kevin, Steve, Brian, and Richard for encouraging me to fulfill my dream of helping the Israeli entertainment business with the vast contacts and resources of our awesome company. I want to thank the investment division and our new business arm for seriously evaluating all the new Israeli tech startups that I bring to their attention, which is very often. <laughs> I want to thank the motion picture department for embracing the Israeli directors and introduce them to. Finally, I want to thank the television department, which are most of you here, because, of, because without the support of my awesome colleagues, I wouldn't be able to do what I am doing. I feel so fortunate to work for such a wonderful organization and so lucky to be in a position where I can combine my love for Israel with my job. It's lucky I never moved there because the difference I can make here is far greater than if I were there.